like to call okay. the uh, regular November monthly meeting of the Board of Trustees to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. I'd ask Peggy to please call the roll. Trustee Cash. Here. Trustee Bridenthal. Here. Trustee Daniels. Here. Trustee Flunder. Here. Trustee Maddox. Here. Trustee Rios. And Trustee Townsend. Here. All right. Thank you. I would I ask for a motion to approve the. Uh, Agenda um, and including the amendment to the agenda. So move. Second. Okay, we have motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll move to item four then. Approval of the minutes of the October 15th, 2013 Board of Trustees meeting. Move approval. Second. second. Okay, we have motion and a second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, and likewise, I need a uh, motion for approval of the minutes of the November 5th Board of Trustees special meeting. So moved. Second. We have motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Brings us down to item number five on the agenda, which is audience to patrons or petitioners. Is there anyone present here today that would like to address the board? Holiday season. Seeing none, we'll move to item number six, Amen. communications, and I'll look to Dr. Givens and Carolyn, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Carolyn Allstar, come forward, please. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, for the fourth consecutive year, Kansas City, Kansas Community College has been named to the coveted Military Friendly Schools list. The 2014 Military Friendly Schools list honors the top 20% of colleges, universities, and trade schools in the country that are doing the most to embrace America's military service members, veterans, and spouses as students and ensure their success on campus. Inclusion on the 2014 list of military-friendly schools shows, that can, shows Kansas City, Kansas Community College's commitment to providing a supportive environment for our military students. The need for education is growing and the mission is to provide the military community with transparent world-class resources to assist in their search for schools, according to uh, Sean Collins, who is with Victory Media, who is the group that provides this award. 1,868 colleges and universities and trade schools are on this year's list and exhibit leading practices in the recruitment and retention of students with military experience. These schools have world-class programs and policies for student support on campus, academic accreditation, credit policies, flexibility, and other services to those who served. A data-driven survey of more than 10,000 schools nationwide, um, which are approved for VA tuition funding, um, is distributed, and that's how the schools are selected to this list. Um, the categories include um, quite a long list. Military support on campus holds the most weight. Uh, academic credibility, percent of military students, academic credit for military service, flexibility for military students, veteran graduation rates, student tuition assistance. There's also a student survey that is distributed to um, veterans that are attending college, um, employment rates, military spouse policies, and government approvals. Now, if you'll recall, I was here last year to present a plaque to Dr. Givens, and as we all know, budgets are getting tighter and this group no longer provides a plaque we can buy one if we'd like to they're about seventy dollars <laughs> but we know our budget's tight also so um, I did uh, bring for each of you kind of a token of this um, award on one side is our intertwined um, 
KC for Kansas City, Kansas Community College. And on the back side is the Military Friendly School logo for 2014. So I have one of these for each of you. Thank you for your support. Um, without the support of the Board of Trustees and the administration, a lot of the things that we do for our military affiliated students would not be possible. Um, based on the information in our student records platform, we have 428 military affiliated students. This includes veterans, active duty, and family members that are attending. So thank you. Thank you. All right, Carolyn, we'll thank you. And on behalf of the board, we uh, would like to thank uh, administration and faculty for all that you do in support of our veterans and our military affiliated families. But I think it's a real honor to be one of the top colleges to receive this uh, recognition again, and we covet it. So thank you very much. Any other comments, trustees? Oh, yes, there are other okay. communications. I'm sorry. Um, KCKCC hosted uh, KC's Global Entrepreneurship Work Week, and it was hosted at the Thomas R. Burke Technical Education Center. Uh, KCKCC was joined by Sprint, Google Fiber, and Think Big Coworking as platinum sponsors of Kansas City Startup Weekend that was held November 15th through the 17th. The goal of the entrepreneur-based event was to help entrepreneurs meet and network with people who can help turn that small idea into a launched business by the end of that weekend. They were successful. I have the numbers available if anybody would like to see them. The, winner, the winners, first, second, and third place, Pigeon, a social game that helps lost pigeons find their way home, won first prize. Second place was Equismart. It's a horse health records for horse owners, veterinarians, and com competitors. And the third place was Peering Photo Dating mobile app built on Instagram. And the favorite was Harp Health which connects first responders to doctors with real-time video conferencing using gl global glass for faster acute care that saves lives. So a thank you goes out to our police and to everyone who had a hand in assisting with making that successful. The organizers said that it was the best internet connectivity and bandwidth they have experienced. So we had great success with their program. Thank you for all the work you do. Uh, Dean Hunt and your, your staff. Um, this is from the Kansas City uh, Area Development Council. Kansas City Area Development Council Board of Directors elected Doris Givens to the Board of Directors for a two-year term. You will be joining other well-known business and civic leaders committed to an aggressive program designed to grow the economy of our bi-state Kansas City area. We're delighted by your willingness to serve. That's from Bob Marcus, the President and CEO. Congratulations, I think. <laughs> um, we also hosted the second annual Workplace Readiness Week here at KCKCC, and it was, at, like everything else that they do, it was very successful. So thank you again, Dean Hunt and your staff. It's getting close to Christmas time where we host Christmas in the City for low-income families living in public housing in Section 8 that have children ages 13 and under. So we do that every year. Um, historically, we host, uh, we serve about a thousand families and if you are in a, in a, in a giving uh, in a giving mode during this, during this season, a $60 donation will sponsor a family of four. And if you're interested, I have the information of who to write the check to, and we'll make sure that the check is delivered so that the, these families, a thousand families in KCK, will have a good Christmas. 
We've been having donuts with Dunn and Doris. Now, there are some folks that say we need to change it from donuts because donuts aren't healthy. So when we find something else that rhymes, we might. But right now, <laughs> it's donuts with Dunn and Doris. So uh, I was here for the first one. And uh, faculty, Melanie Jackson Scott, uh, who's been here 32 years, was one faculty member. She's full time. We had part time faculty, Patsy Kyle. Um, and we had Doug Sickle, who is also part-time faculty or adjunct. And then we had an admin as assistant, uh, Miss Allen, who's the admin assistant uh, in Baz Abelanian's area. So those are the folks we had on October 22nd. There was a second one on November 12th and probably uh, President Ash. Chairman Ash will talk about that one. Today we hosted our first, and you can't call the first one annual, but we, we will do this annually if there are members of our faculty, staff, uh, board um, who, who, um, who die during the year. We'll do it annually and we'll do it about this time every year. Today uh, we invited the families of Felicia Hurst and Curtis Smith to come because those are the two that we lost uh, during the course of last year. And so they came today and we hosted the families and we had a very nice uh, ceremony. And the tree is planted, there is a sign on the tree marking it as uh, in memoriam to uh, those two um, uh, employees that we lost during the course of last year. And I thank you all who attended. It was a, a w well attended too, and that's important for the families. And I think that's all. Okay, uh, just to expound a little bit more on uh, donuts with Doris and Don. We uh, we just it's an informal time that we spend with employees to give them an opportunity to share with us what they would like the president of the college and the chairman of the board of trustees or the board of trustees to to know. And uh, Dr. Vitali sat in and your absence last week. We had a great visit with four additional employees um, scattered from around the college. Um, we've had folks from IT, from Tech Center, from um, English Department, um, Wellness Center. Um, gosh, help me out. Was it grounds? Was it not Buildings, Buildings and Grounds didn't right. make it. He didn't he make it the other oh. day. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I don't know how they win this lottery. I think that's, you know, uh, Dr. Givens and Peggy have got that figured out. But, uh, you know, they're designed to be about an hour and for us just to visit informally and let them share with us. And I, I know in the first meeting, Doris took uh, f at least one full page of notes, if not two or three, that she, um, uh, ideas and, and thoughts that were uh, really pretty good and very insightful. And so, the employees have been open, they've been engaging, very much so, and uh, it, once again, it just goes to solidify the strength of this college, which I think is the people that we have here. Uh, very diverse, very capable, very competent, um, and very engaged, by and large, um, and looking to engage, you know, more uh, with, with various suggestions, and so, uh, it's been a good, productive time, I think, and we, we are planning to do one session a month. And uh, we'll work around to everybody that has an interest in, you know, coming and visiting with us. So uh, stay tuned. Your number may come up in the lottery here before. Yes. <laughs> this is part of our strategic plan. Um, mm -hmm. One area has this as one of their outcomes to improve communication at the college and so we're working that strategic plan okay all right um, any other questions or comments on the president's report if not I'll entertain a motion <coughs> so move Second. all right we have a motion and second to accept the president's report all in favor mm -hmm. aye. 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 any opposed Motion carries. All right, agenda item eight, Vice President for Academic Affairs report. We'll hear from Dr. Vitali. Okay. Report. Dr. Gibbons. 
I'm oh, I'm sorry, President's yeah. report. Yeah. Oh, there was one. That was communication. Yeah, that was communication. We are at a point uh, at the college where um, <coughs> we've heard mentioned several times uh, a foundation for the college, and we've never come to any consensus. I've never been directed to develop a foundation, so I'm 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 wanting direction from the board about where we go with a foundation, developing a foundation at the college. I have talked to um, uh, Attorney Wynn, and um, he, he has given me some information about it, and he can give some more information about what it takes to develop a, a foundation and what that will look like if the board has questions of him. Okay. I would just ask Mr. Wynn what would be the process, and what would be involved in setting that up? I think we would begin by developing a corporation. You would tell me who the members of the corporation would be. We have a general sense of what the purpose might be. It would be to wait, uh, raise funds or to support the educational mission of the, uh, of the college, and there may be some other things as well. From there, once we get that established, you would seek a 501c3 status, which is you would need a letter from IRS indicating that you meet all the requirements for that. And that's just another process that you'd go through. My sense is that to develop the corporate body you need to begin the process to get tax exempt status would be maybe 60 to 90 days once you decided what you wanted to do. And then from there, it would depend on where you fall in the IRS sort of a chain of, of what is next. But we've done a dozen or so of these over the years. And this is the type of purpose and this is the type of entity that typically doesn't experience that much difficulty or pushback. <laughs> but what you would need to, be, to begin the process is an action by the Board of Trustees indicating that you'd like to move forward. My thought would be to authorize Dr. Givens to do what is necessary, number one, to establish the corporate entity necessary. And then once that's been established, to approach you again within the next month or so about the corporate uh, tax exempt status or the 501c3 status, and then I could tell you more about what that entails then. Um, it's not unusual. And uh, Dr. Daniels was with me, I'm going to say some 23, 24 years ago when we did the first educational not-for-profit foundation in this area. And so we've, we've got some history as to some of your members with what you're doing. Um, and so, Mr. Chairman, right now, I, I guess what we're looking for, and, and, and <coughs> Dr. Givens in particular, is an indication that this is what you'd like to happen, and then a directive for us to make it so, and then to come back to you for the approval that's needed in between now and then. And my thought is that an outside time would be perhaps at the end of this academic year or maybe the beginning of next year you'd like to see what is what I've described in place. Dr. Givens is that about right? Yes. All right well and then that's what you do. There's some other issues that are legal issues that I'd be happy to discuss with you in closed session but this is the general overview that I think it's important for you to know. Thank you. You need a motion? Well yes I mean ultimately we need a motion. Is there any more question or so what we'd be voting on today would be moving the process forward, but there would still be more discussion. Well, yes, and, and I think that, and Dr. Givens, you help me, what you were looking for is, is, is some push by the board or some affirmation that this is a step they'd like us to explore and to come back with a formal action for you to act upon in the future, but sooner rather than later. Now, Dr. Givens, help me out. Absolutely. Okay. You're correct. I'll make that motion. I, I think there's still some, I'm not sure the board's had a lot of discussion around this item, but we've had enough, I think, at least we've shown an interest in it. So I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and, and approve the moving forward with it, and, and then we could have more discussion and come back and make a final decision. But we have had conversation about putting a foundation in place. So I'll make that motion, but Daryl said. Second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion or question? everybody clear on what we're mm -hmm. asking to move forward. All right. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So ordered. I've finished. She's finished. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Since we just voted on what her report was and she asked to do, I don't know now that we need to another motion to approve, approve her report or do we? Mr. President, you, you, you can we did. accept no, or approve it, but my thought is that yeah. that was her report. Yes. That's mm -hmm. my thought as well. I just wanted to clarify. You're correct. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving to agenda item number eight. Now we will hear from Dr. Batali. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, you have your, my report in front of you. If there are any questions, I'll certainly answer them. Uh, did want to mention that uh, over the weekend, uh, I think it started uh, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon, uh, our theater department put on the play Harvey, which was very entertaining. Uh, one of our faculty members was one of the stars in it. And I think she was really playing herself, <laughs> okay. uh, if you know her. But anyway, uh, she had a great time doing it. I saw her uh, Monday. Uh, there was a jazz concert last night, and the vocal concert is tomorrow night. And uh, I leave tomorrow to go to Chicago for a Higher Learning Commission meeting on the Pathways. Uh, Okay. Song Ki Min is driving to Chicago as we sit here and have our board mem meeting because he preferred to drive since it was less than 10 hours and rather than fly. So I'm flying. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> All right. Are there any? Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions, questions or uh, comments. Sure. Okay, Ray. Uh, Vice President Vitale, on page 15. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Min's not here, so I don't expect an answer on this today, but mm -hmm. he's working on developmental with developmental education to find the terms for college ready and developmental design design research methodologies for launching in-depth research and developmental education. In case you get, could we get a report on that down the road somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. What that's going to look like in mm -hmm. the progress? Because I think that's a really important, uh, important work that that group is doing. I don't know who all is doing it, but uh, next month or two or somewhere where you could get to the point you can make it a report I'd appreciate that and then at the bottom of the page talk about a learning management system blackboard is approved I'm familiar with that blackboard program is that going to be a are, are teachers going to be using that in classroom and how is blackboard going to be used in the college? blackboards a it's the course management tool and that's well that's the platform that all of our online courses will be offered through okay. um, right now we're using a product called angel started out as an open source software and, and I think it was one of those that were open source and then became closed source and Blackboard purchased it and they're no longer going to continue to support it. Okay. So we had to make a move to a learning different learning management system. Uh, the faculty and looked at uh, several, narrowed it down to two, chose the, the Blackboard platform, which is very similar to Angel. Okay. And they'll be implementing that for the fall of 2014. All of our online courses will be in it. Our hybrid courses, our blended courses, where they're on in class part of the time and online part of the time, will be in it. And uh, <coughs> other courses. And one of the things I'm working with with the academic deans and and over with the online services is the hope that down the road all of our faculty will have the opportunity to use it as a shell for their course right. so that if the if the faculty wants to put you know if they're doing uh, videos powerpoints they can put those there so the students would have access to them anytime and uh, you know they could use it for practice quizzes and so forth if they wanted and <coughs> even something just as simple as posting their grades in there because the students log in they have access to it. It's secure, and so that's that's what the Thank the you. blackboard yeah, is. Yeah, sounds You're great. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate that. I just had a had a comment on on page thirteen at the bottom. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, about Jim Mayer, um, I went to the the West Branch Library for the reception, 
where his group played, which they're always wonderful. But I would encourage you all to go and visit the West Branch Library to see the, the a photography exhibit. It is really wonderful of, of a lot of the old and current uh, jazz musicians, but also Jim Mayer's uh, photograph is there as well. It's wonderful. So just wanted to encourage you to attend uh, the activities of Bop in the Dot. Yeah. 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 I, I have cool. a question. Yes, Mary Ann. On the Healthy Communities, the steering yes, committee, what, real shortly, tell me what they're doing. Uh, what they're doing is they're looking at, at ways to improve the overall health of the population in Wyandotte County. I think Kansas, uh, Wyandotte County is the, if not the lowest, one of the lowest ranking. And we're 105 out of 105. We right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I think we moved up one. I think we moved up one. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. and, and strategies, you know, how, what we can do, uh, different aspects of the com okay. county can do to help improve the overall health of the people who live in okay, but have they got something set of how you're gonna do it not just say I you know I I don't think there's been any really concrete okay plans as yet it, it seems I think it's fairly new it's um, part of the mayor's mm -hmm. task force that's task force and, and okay, stuff so we're moving he had it before he I've been there. to two meetings, two meetings. so far and mayor uh, there's some there's some work groups within that that, that do things uh, like there's an education subcommittee that Dr. Daniels is chair of and uh, so we we just submitted uh, things that our different businesses do to help promote health and wellness of either their employees or clients etc and, and so from here we looked at what what's available to the college uh, faculty and staff and then what do we have available to the to our students and what would also be available to the general public in terms of our continuing ed offerings and, and so forth and in terms of nutrition okay. programs and etc okay. any additional questions for dr. Vitale all right I'll entertain a motion then so moved to approve Dr. Vitale's report. All right, we have a motion and second, second. from Trustee Townsend. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item nine, Vice President for Student Administrative Services, Mr. Bodie. Thank you. Um, you have my report um, and I will answer any questions that you may have about that. <coughs> Sorry to see the mill levy situation. I know you were too. <laughs> yes, um, 41 one thousandths of a mil up increase. Um, there was about a $800,000 change in the uh, in the appraised value. So. Okay. Mr. Bodie, I have a question about um, Linda Wyatt's report. And it's about the, um, the interviews that occurred on campus. I was uh, really impressed by her comment where she was talking about the um, students that interviewed and that the companies were uh, impressed with the quality of the students and how they dressed and were prepared for interviews. What are we doing to prepare the students so well? Well, we have a, I mean, there's a program across this campus that, that is going on at all times. Uh, we have a financial literacy program. Um, we have a program where we bring students in and show them. Uh, Marvin, help me with the name. I'm stuck. Fleet. Sorry. Financial literacy and es essential employability um, skills. We bring them in. We they do mock interviews. We tell them you have to dress properly for for uh, an interview. Um, you need to speak properly when you're in the interview. We we train them. We test them and we get them ready for those. We have a cl the closed bank here. Um, a lot of the people that got job interviews and did well in those interviews um, went across the hallway from the, from the career center there, went through our clothing bank and picked out a good looking shirt or a, a, a nice dress and had, had a better set of clothing to be there for the interview. I think it's, 
and it's in every department, it's in every class, it's in the, the things that Marvin and the fleet program are doing and, and the Career Center does every day. They counsel those kids, if you want a job, um, you need to look and you need to impress the person that's across from you at the interview table. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were very happy and it's nice when after TJ Mack was here, they called back and said, these kids are working do you have some more? And we explained we had a fairly readily supply um, that they could come back anytime. So it, it's, it's a good program. Uh, Target was here also. And so it's, a, it's, it's good that, that those employers know they can come here. Some of them are seasonal. Let's not kid ourselves. They're gonna be there through the Christmas, um, Black Friday or whatever they call it, coming up next week through the Christmas holiday. But if they do well, they have the opportunity to, to get a job that that they can keep so it's why we have the career center well I saw that in your report and I, I thought it was worthwhile elaborating on it especially since we are to the public I think the public needs to know about the good work that's All right. right thank you and I'll pass that to Miss Wyatt and her staff too thank you thank you Good <coughs> the um, basketball schedules are they out yes ma'am okay, I want one yes ma'am <laughs> I have a, a question on uh, under uh, Jim Beachwood's uh, information on developing the RFQ uh, for preliminary assessment of, of marketing and advertising. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? What what that well, RFQ Jim and I have entails? Been, yes, Jim and I have been discussing um, how do you go about asking a marketing company um, or an advertising company or a consulting company. What are we looking for um, in, as we look at, and his, his group of the strategic plan, he's the chair of uh, the team leader of one of the groups on the strategic plan, they've been talking about it. We're trying to figure out what are we gonna ask for. We can go out and hire a marketing company, but you know, we, wanna, we have to bid that because it's gonna cost serious uh, amount of money. But what, what are we looking for? What questions do we want them to answer? how do we want them to approach us do they want we want them to listen to our ads look at our print media what do we want as we start to put together this request for companies to come in here and bid for a job to look at and revamp our marketing plan and that's what Jim and I have been working on so it, does it include um, the uh, actual development of a marketing plan that you're looking at uh, in terms of that RFQ? No, ma'am. Oh, it doesn't? It, it's the research of what a marketing plan should look like. When we get done with that, when we figure out what we really need, then we can look at if that company is a marketing company, if we want to stay there or we go bid that. No, it's the research of what somebody who's a marketing professional thinks we ought to be doing. Okay. Good question. <coughs> it's not easy to write. <laughs> it's it, it's fairly easy to say yeah I want you to come in and take a look at our at our marketing plan but it's when you sit down and try to put something together where corporations are going to come in here and bid on this and and spend the money to, to show us what they do and how they do it <coughs> it's um, strained both of us and our talents or lack thereof <laughs> All right. I had one question on page 28 uh, under disability services it indicates that um, there's a vacancy for the director of that program and it says this is creating a void in the leadership I'm sure we have somebody leading that program so who, who has picked that up now well, we, uh, we have assigned someone that responsibility yes in the in the academic resource center um, and they're doing a good job but it's not there and, um, but it's not leadership less. I mean, there is somebody there that. Oh, and Dr. McDowell is always That's making fine. sure that that department's taken care of. But in that specific area, and we're finding out, and, and Denise and I spoke about it again last week. First, we're putting together a change in that job description. Um, do we need to fill that position? The change in that job description to justify to Dr. Givens uh, a, a new position there um, that will be a little bit different than the one that was there. Um, and the other thing is we are spending a ton of money um, that we get no reimbursement from the state for 
on um, disability access. And so we are trying to come up with, and we are working on trying to get someone that, um, to really do an in-depth review of what we're doing. If, if we have two students in one program who have, uh, who are deaf, um, do we need two interpreters? Do we need one? Um, it's really becoming an issue at the Technical Education Center where students are in a classroom, that's fine, you can have one interpreter, but when they separate and go to their shop, you have to have a second person there, and we're burning through money um, real quickly. I'm, I'm sorry, the job description on this one has already been out, and Denise is reviewing it. I was thinking of financial aid, got them confused. Um, but yes, disability services are, have been a subject of discussion in the last couple of weeks more than I thought. Yeah. Well, just left the impression that there wasn't anybody leading that program. Yeah. I was confident yes. that wasn't true. No, no. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. I ask okay, for good. approval of my report, please. So move. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, in page 34 of your um, of our new books. Um, it's a resolution um, asking the board to approve a resolution to levy a tax and create the capital outlay fund. Each every five years, um, we must renew our capital mill levy. Um, we did this five years ago. We have to publish this in the newspaper. Uh, it'll be published for three weeks in the official newspaper. And so I ask that uh, either you allow me to read it or we adopt it without. Um, it being read, but whatever way I need this resolution, I ask for your approval, please. Do we have to read it, Daryl? My suggestion yes. is that you do, yes. Okay. Yes. Brian, please go ahead. Um, <coughs> resolution to levy tax and create capital outlay fund, the resolution. Whereas the Board of Trustees of Kansas City, Kansas Community College is authorized by law to it KSA 71501-795040 at sequel to make an annual tax levy for a period of time not to exceed five years upon all taxable tangible property in the community college district for the purpose of creating a capital outlay fund for the purpose of construction, reconstruction, repair, remodeling, additions to furnishing and equipping of the community college buildings, architect architectural expenses incidental thereto, and the acquisition of real property for the use as building sites or for educational programs and Whereas said Board of Trustees has determined to exercise the authority vested in it by said law, now therefore be it resolved that the above named community college shall be authorized to make an annual tax levy for a period of five years upon the assessed, assessed tangible property in the community college district for the purpose of remodeling additions to furnishing and equipping of the community college buildings, architectural expenses incidental thereto, and the acquisition of real property for the use of building sites or for educational programs. Adopted this 19th day of November 2013 by the Board of Trustees of Kansas City, Kansas Community College in the County of Wyandotte, State of Kansas. Who to adopt? All right, we have a motion. Second have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Any question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. At this time, I'm going to um, introduce um, Dwight Niebling, Brad Berger, and Bill Sixta from Chevron Energy, and Fred DeCento from J.E. Dunn. I guess Brad's gonna do the speaking. Um, and on page 31, 2, 3, and 4 of your, 31, 32, 33, um, I guess we left the done one out, I'm sorry. This is, they're going to go through today the energy conservation program that about four or five months ago you authorized us to pursue. Um, they came back a couple weeks ago. We took this to Clyde and JD and the finance committee the other night. Um, they had four or five separate projects. The project presented here is the project that encompasses the items that create energy savings for the college and give us a better total envelope for the buildings and, and the college on the main campus here. Someone's going to ask me where the vestibules are. 
Um, they're not on here. Um, <laughs> there is a, you knew I was going to ask Well, it's, um, we had to look at projects that truly saved our energy and truly had some type of a uh, payback period on them. Um, and they, um, they, were, they could have been in there, but the cost for them and the cost to the college made this a significantly different period. We also looked at um, could we roll into this program um, some construction money? And the financing company from, from Chevron called, we were looking at expanding the boardroom and expanding the residential office suite area and perhaps a grand entrance at the jewel entrance for that. But these are energy, these are, are capital improvement leases that come with equipment leases on them. And when you get that heavy of a construction piece within this, then the, the equipment lease financing does not um, qualify. And so we would not be able to qualify for the leasing on this if we put all of that extra construction into this because it doesn't come with uh, equipment that they can that they can secure by the lease. And so they called me, I guess it was early last week, and said, um, "You can't add this to it, or or the banks aren't going to pick it up." They did offer, if in fact you authorize us today to go forward and to negotiate this and to get the real financing and get everything going on this, um, Chevron Energy did say, you know, they're gonna have their banks wherever they're at um, bid this. They're going to give us this and allow us, um, they want us to try to bid at local bank also. And so it will go out if we, if we approve this, then we're gonna try to get local financing um, on this if it can compete with, uh, I'm sure they're in gigantic banks and. California and Texas that they deal with. So we will try. Bodie. Ma'am. It's one, not one of those, not that place out there where you come in, the jewel building out here, not even one of those can be fixed where we have some double doors so the snow won't come in with you. Not you know what, if I was Merle, I'd quit because I would not sit there in that cold spot all winter. That don't, that don't make sense because it's going to come in and we could look like we could get, out of all of this, look like we could get one, which would be that one that leads into Jewel. And right beside that, ma'am, is a great big drop off down into those stairs. That is an engineering and an architectural nightmare. Yes, in fact, we can. And we are going to look at some other ways of doing it, but not in this project, ma'am. How soon? <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. No, you don't want to know my to page list. Three to three. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, was there a difference between the two pages, 32 and 33? They look like they're identical. They are. I, I, there was a different page that I should have gotten put in there as opposed to this. It was supposed to be, I got the wrong page placed in it. So. Um, okay, are we ready for the presentation? Brad, would you? The other one was developing a project, an energy project that would have great impact on the college. And then what can we do to partner with the community on jobs? So those are really kind of the three main focuses that we really targeted when we were pursuing this project. So when you start with, you know, enhancing education, I've met with a number of the trustees, with the administration, in terms of what do we want to do to enhance education. I've talked to some other colleagues I have at other community colleges, and they came back and said you need to have an educational experience, you know, really expound on that educational experience. And one of the things that I got back from the administration and trustees is 
the internships. Because once a kid or once a student can take that real life learning in a classroom and apply it to a work environment, just like you were talking through the fleet program, then all of a sudden a trigger might go off in terms of what do I want to do with my career? What can I do to impact life or moving forward in terms of my educational career and my long-term career? Well, when you look at our office and what we have here in Kansas City, it's mainly an engineering office. But we not only have engineers, we have drafting, we have accounting, we have IT, we have legal, and we have sales and marketing. And so what we're doing is developing a rotational internship program where we can have a student come in on a semester basis and work through three or four different departments within our organization so they can look at their class schedule and see what they can do to move through our program in terms of rotational internship program. We're still working with Dr. Kramer in terms of what can we do in terms of helping on STEM studies and STEM education, STEM programs. But I believe by going forward first with the internship programs and getting that going first, we can have a greater impact in terms of, of getting someone involved with our program. We also want to be able to bring our projects into the classroom and work with the folks over at the tech center so that they can tie into our energy management systems, the controls, and we've had talks if there's any equipment that we're taking off that we can salvage that they may be able to use in the tech center. So we're, we're trying to collaborate and develop those programs on the educational portion. The other side of the project is really, is kind of the, the, the meat of it, is, but it's the energy enhancements and what are we doing to the campus to improve it. And as Brian was saying, we, we went through an exhaustive list. We, we put them in different categories, we made them different ways, and the vestibules just fell out just because of the impact in terms of energy savings and cost compared to the other projects. We tried to put them in, they just wouldn't fit. And then when you start getting into a lot of real property versus personal property, with the vestibules not having a lot of savings to it, that starts looking more like an architectural design versus an energy efficiency measure. So through financing, it kind of helped disqualify that. Even though we didn't want to, it was just part of the program. So that's the way it worked out. So when you look at what we're doing is we're looking at roofs and windows. And when you start looking at roofs and windows in the building envelope, the enti this entire building, Jewel, is all going to get a new roof and new windows. So you're basically getting a brand new building in terms of the building envelope. In addition to that, we're getting the energy management controls and the mechanical systems. And when we talk about mechanical systems, we're talking about the HVAC, the heating, and the cooling. And one of the key components of this project is converting from an all electric system to natural gas. You have an Atmos gas line that runs within 100 yards of the campus. And one of the things we've been lucky so far, the ground hasn't frozen. Well, if we want to get this done, what's it, the reason why I bring that up is because if the ground freezes, we can't put in our pipeline. 100, was it about 100 yards, Fred? About 100 yards worth of gas pipe. And the, the key issue there is all the new systems we're putting in are both going to be electric and gas. And so we can't start replacing and doing the HVAC work until we get the gas line in. So there's a, that's a key component of this program in terms of getting conversion off of a 100% all electric to natural gas as a second heat source. And then the other issue is lighting. You guys have done a very good job in terms of the staff as in terms of self-performing a lot of the lighting systems. So that's a portion of the project, but it's not a real large portion because a lot of it's already been done through existing operating funds. So then you start looking at, well, how do we affect the community? Well, as you can see uh, on, the, for, on the performa that should be in, in your books, this is a fairly significant project for energy efficiency. And one of the things we want to do is make sure these projects and jobs and opportunities stay local to Wyandotte County in Kansas City. And we're committed to utilizing the existing contractors, the existing personnel that you've used in the past to build and develop this project. I've listed uh, four of them here, Design Mechanical, Delta Roofing, W. Carter and Associates, and CNC Group were all involved in developing the pricing and the overall structure of this project. So we've been working with them already and we continue to work with them in the past. And then what we're going to ask is, as these main contractors start working with tier two contractors, we're really going to focus on some of the smaller minority business that they could help and leverage to do additional work for them. So we're committed to making that work. So then really, uh, that being said, as, as Mr. Bode had mentioned, the, the second thing is really how does these projects get financed? It's a really simple tax exempt municipal lease financing process. And once you start adding in the buildings, it gets more of a mortgage look to it versus tax exempt leasing. And so we work with a number of national lenders, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, some independent uh, lessors like Cannon and Armstrong. But what we want to do is really focus on other local lenders. 
So when I was at the chamber meeting the other night, I talked with the folks from Liberty Bank, with uh, Brotherhood Bank, and they were interested in talking to us about financing this project. So I'm excited about that. So with that being said, are there any questions in regards to the scope that should be a matrix in your board packet about the projects and then also the overall cost of the project? Oh, I got a couple. You said CNC? CNC Group. Who is it? They are a, a uh, they've been working here in the college for a number of years and they are a control manufacturer, a control installer. So the energy management system is what they manage. Okay, and who was the other one? Uh, the other groups uh, we've got, I should know, a Design Mechanical, okay. Delta Roofing, and then Debbie Carter and Associates. Yeah, There's one more, somebody Casey Mechanical. <clears throat> okay, Delta Roofing, okay. I, I got another one. Our science building is in this bad of shape. You got dots all over it. It's been a lot of work done to it. I don't know the exact, uh, I mean, <laughs> If you look at it, those are all the different components that are being done. I'd have to look at the I know. exact. I got the most. Okay. We need to tear it down, start over. Right on your matrix. We need to tear um, it down, start over. I understand where there's a dot, that's where you're going to do something. Correct. Mm -hmm. Where there's not a dot, does that mean we don't need it or we're already doing it? Or maybe both? I'm a both. It mean both depending on the specific item that Okay. Occupy, uh, um, you know, oc occupancy sensors and stuff. We have many of those already in class okay. that, that take care of people when they walk in, you know, and so these are added. Anything that's not on here that was left out besides the vestibules that we left out because of cost? Well, I think that's pretty. Okay. Okay. And you saying, Brad, that that was just because of the cost? Four. The vestibules? Uh -huh. Well, it's it's cost and it's, financing. Yeah. And so it's, it's really two components. When you start looking at the cost of all the vestibules and then the financing, when you start mixing real property and personal property in a lease, the lessors look at it differently. Because if you think about a lease, it's like leasing a car. Uh, the tax exempt lease that we would be using for this program would just be like you lease a car. So if for some reason the, the payments aren't made, they have collateral on that equipment. Well, if it's a vestibule they don't have collateral on that vestibule so that becomes real property where it's more of a mortgage it looks more like a mortgage type setup hmm. it's just the different way they finance real per real property versus personal property okay, you want to teach me that. I'll get John Bergwell because he's gonna have to teach me because that's about all I know <laughs> on the um, Brian page 32 um, the financial aspects of the performance-based energy program. If I can walk you through that, please. That'd I'll, be I'll, great because I think there are a handful of trustees that uh, first column got lost on that walk. Column two are, are energy savings by putting these um, by putting these projects in this equipment in. This is the estimated. In fact, this is the guaranteed line that that we will we will save on our current energy um, bill consumption right. operational maintenance savings well those are an estimate if we put new machines in um, and they have a 15 or a 20 year life and we're replacing one that's already been here for 12 or 18 years those are the expenses that we will save by not having to maintain, maintain those yeah. pieces of equipment that are already there we won't be patching the roof so three is we'll be putting a new roofs on um, column four is the really critical one for the board to look at. Uh, column four is the annual customer contribution. We can't pay for this entire project um, with energy savings. And so this is a commitment of $291,000, $300,000 a year. The college has to commit to this project that we will take the energy savings for the next 15 years. We will take the operational and maintenance savings for the next 15 years. And we will put in for the next 15 years about $300,000. And when we do all of that, then we will get this project done. And we will, I mean, after 15, obviously, we hope aren't paying. We won't be paying anymore, and the energy savings continue. But we have to make a commitment of the money we save this year in energy goes into this project to pay for it. 
plus that contribution. And those are the, those are the way we pay for this project over the next 15 years. And we, we make about $10.9 million to the leaser and we make about $11 million. There's about $100,000 truly of, of difference. But we're going to get $11 million worth of, of this project here. This is an example set at I don't know, three and a, three and a half or three point seven or three point seven five percent interest rate. We still think that's a good. Brian, can any of that money be paid out of capital outlay? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, and and one of the things that we spoke about is we will identify in, just like we did the 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 lease payments to the state of Kansas, right. that we're continuing mm -hmm. to pay the eight years that we that we yes. got the money to do the first set of roofs and the second set of roofs. We will identify that in the capital budget and set that each year we will pay, we will have that um, payment that we know we have to add to. The difficult one will be the management within the the, the um, general fund budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did we save five hundred thousand dollars this year from from BPU? Well, that's what we have to set up inside to make sure we understood right. that we saved this amount of money. And even though in the past we wrote the check to one company, we're still going to have to pull that out and make that payment to another company. And so we're, there's not going to be some big cash flow um, wonderland here for 15 years. After that, I would hope it's really a, a, a savings for the entire, uh, for the college every year out. And obviously, it is an, the, an energy savings program like this. You have to pay for it for a while, but after that, it becomes a program that saves forever. We'll at least have a 20-year roof. For five years, we shouldn't have anything. The, the amount of money saved by the roof should be five years. Boilers last 30, 40 years if they get proper maintenance. So for 30 or 40 years, those boilers should run at this college with proper maintenance. And you've, oh, it took you 15 to pay for them, but they should give you 25 years after that. And I guess even though we, we do the economy and we, we do the environment some good. Okay. So did that and enter anybody? That's five and six. Seven is, the, is their measurement what, what? program, total program cost of 11 million. Um, and Seven over 15 million. years, those, those are the net savings. The critical two columns is the column two and column four we have to make a commitment and well I guess the real one is column six we got to make a commitment that we're going to make those six hundred thousand dollar to eight hundred thousand dollar payments for the next 15 years I mean that is what the company who whoever finances this project is going to want us to do does the savings reflect when you have everything done or will it start the savings start or you start phasing things in is that we will start accounting for savings during the construction period but these these, these numbers are for when it's all in when it's all done okay and how long is that going to take Because, ma'am, a lot of this has to be done at night, um, you know, and we're going to have scheduling issues with classrooms. This is not going to be, I mean, when we're going through every office and every classroom in this building and we're taking all the windows out of, right. out of this building, it'll be, we'll have to schedule this board meeting on the proper day when there's windows back in this. <laughs> yeah, and I'd like to reiterate, one of the key factors is the ground freezing because we can't start any of the HVAC work if the ground freezes. We've been fortunate we've had a late spring. Yes. Yeah. But if, it's, if it gets cold and the ground freezes, then that really backs up, you know, the construction. Did Ryan, I know you probably don't have this, but any idea at all how much <coughs> ratio between general fund and capital outlay might be on our payment? The to well, well, today, well, no, I would try to keep it exactly like this. I would like to commit $300,000 from the capital from fund. The whole thing from capital. The 300. Yeah. And then yeah. the, the savings from the general fund that we save in the general fund, use those also and, 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 and so we can track them that way. Good. Okay. Good. Did, did you say 3.75 uh, 3. interest? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. I'm, that's the estimate. This number could yeah. change, and you will obviously see the true number, but Dr. Givens and I need some, uh, you know, some guidance and some authority so we can go out, and they can go, and we can try to go out and get this thing financed. So, so, so Brian, uh, you went all the way up to column nine and didn't explain that. And am I to assume, or, sh or should we assume that the the real savings doesn't start until after year fifteen? The real cash savings, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. If uh, column nine, if you look at the difference between um, eleven million six hundred and eighty-nine, come on, machine, don't do. Six eighty nine. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We got it. That that's the difference between that and the ten million eight hundred and ninety six thousand dollars that we're gonna pay. I mean it it is a net net savings we're That's really a bad call. I mean it, we should rename that a, a different name because it's really just yeah. kinda I mean it's pennies when you look at the size of the project. Yeah, I know. And so yeah, really I think that's, why, to your I think point, that's why a couple of us struggled yes. with it because it didn't truly seem like net savings to us. Right. The energy savings are in column two. Oh, we yeah. we hope in 15 years to save six and a half or six point two million dollars right. in energy yeah. um, bills. That's after the gas get in here. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. The BPU raises the rate. We still won't have that. Mm. Don't be looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said if BPU raises their rate, you still won't have that savings. <laughs> That's what I said. That's what we have to dig. And, w and these have been, these um, oh. figures have all been adjusted for 4% inflation. Oh. So they, we've looked at that. It's pretty tough to, to predict what the rate for electrical mm. will be 15 years from now yeah. or the rate for natural gas. Uh, it's predictable of what it will be next month. Mm. Okay. Good. Okay. Excellent questions and great responses, everyone. Any other questions? Brad, are you going to talk about the internship program? No, you want to talk about the, the J.D. Dunn's intern program? Okay. I didn't even look down there. Uh, as Brad said, there's an internship program that's part of this this whole overall uh, project. What JE Dunn is committed to do is provide two internships uh, through our regular internship program through our HR department, uh, which we're really going through right now, trying to determine who and how and where that fits in. Uh, right now, our plan is to look at one intern from the construction group, the construction classes here, uh -huh. and let him work with the field management side, and then uh, another person from the business school side here, and then work with our business management side. So we're, we're wanting to provide two internships, probably not quite sure exact on all the details of how it's gonna work, but two paid internships uh, for two people here. And, and we'll let the department's heads here or your group decide who gets those internships or who comes to us for interviews so we can interview those people and work together on how to provide those internships. Great. And we were happy to see that, that they had asked for um, someone either from business, they were also looked at the potential we may look at someone um, from our drafting department, oh. they have that, I spoke to Matt today. Um, it's important that we just, it's not just the construction management um, side of the class, um, does obviously a massive um, mm -hmm. business Come and we have good business students in this, in, in here and so we need to reach out to those, not just the uh, the construction side so we were very happy that they that they offered in the business side of the house and perhaps the drafting also okay. Good. thank you so I would ask if the board could authorize dr. Givens and I to um, proceed with this project and for us to have the ability to seek financing and to bring it to your December meeting for the final final approval so moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Are there additional questions or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank motion you. Motion carries. Six Thank, Thank you. you all very Thanks, much. Guys. Appreciate it. Yes, we're looking forward to the right. benefits here. Okay. okay. 
Um, item number 10 on the agenda, uh, finance. I ask for your approval on item 10A of the payment of the bills. Okay. Um, Trustee Townsend, you care to chime in from the finance committee's perspective? JD usually carries this bucket on payment of the bills. Did you, your committee have a chance to we, review? We did, we did, we did, we did go over it and everything. And it is in order, Mr. Chairman. All right. Like Thank you. Page four. Page four. You move for approval? Yes, sir. All right. I have a motion. Does anybody else want to pay the bills? No. That's second. <laughs> All right. We have a second. Thank you very much. Are there questions about paying the bill? We're still looking. We can't, we, we're still trying to find them. We're scrolling. <laughs> we're just scrolling. Okay. We're trying to find all these bills. All right, I'll give you a minute. Okay. <laughs> all right. They start on page thirty. They start on. They start on page thirty-six, and they run into the page hundreds. Forty-three. Yes. Look at all eighty pages. <laughs> yes. Right down here. And, yeah. and one of scrolling the things, should have been prior to the meeting. I think. <laughs> one of the things um, Peggy and I talked about is how are we going to try to figure out how to shorten this? And yes. so we're going to be working with the finance committee to see if there's any way to shorten this um, so that you don't have to try to scroll 80 pages. But yep. currently you have to. <laughs> All right. We're going to call the pages. question. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I actually found it easier than flipping all yeah. those pages. All in favor of the motion to pay the bills? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Aye. All right, the motion carries. We'll pay the bills. Aye. Thank you. I ask for your approval under um, 10B on the financial reports. So moved. Reviewed by the committee also. Trustee Townsend motions to approve. Second. <coughs> second. I think that was a second from Dr. <laughs> Daniels. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> Any question or comment? Uh, financial report. Oh, that's fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And, un and under 10C, 1 through 7, I ask for your approval of um, these recommendations. Mm -hmm. So move. I'll second, but I got a question. Yes, sir. All right. We have a motion and a second. Now, questions or comments? Question on number seven. Number seven. That's yes, sir. Uh, page five. Um, the, we had another power surge, um, and we're trying to figure out why that happened. But with our deductible being a $25,000 deductible for that type of stuff, and the bills, the estimate is $17,800 to replace them, um, we have to pay that. Mm -hmm. What's the Do prohibition on, on uh, reducing the, the... I can't hear you, sir. What, what's the, why won't we reduce the deductible since, since this happens? This happens more. Than well, I, we, we, can, we can look at that. The farther we reduce the deductible on, on mm -hmm. property, the, the higher that bill goes. It's been 25000 I think, since I came here. And um, we can look at that, sir, but uh, let, let, let us take a look and see what would happen if we did, in fact, reduce that. The, the big challenge there is that something big happens yeah. Um, yeah. to the school. Brian, yes, do you know um, if we have the metering surge protectors <coughs> and the meters of the buildings that BPU offers? Do you know if we have those? I do not know if we have them. I will check though. Um, it is not our buildings, and so we are still negotiating with. These are all in housing, and we're right. the tenant, mm -hmm. and we're still trying to negotiate. However, this equipment added to that building is our equipment at our request and at our work, but the building is theirs, and so we're a tenant, and this is tenant added. So maybe we need renter's insurance with a lower deductible, but um, that's why we're on the hook for these. I will check the, the a metering system on from BPU. A surge on. protect that yeah. right that goes right, right at the meter. Right at the meter. Right at the meter. I know I have one in my home, yeah, and I knock too. on wood, up to this point, I've never had a, an issue okay. with an electronic on any surge issue that yeah. BPU has. Do you have a rate? Right, uh, really good. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. pennies a uh, month, really, for 
you know, for it, and yeah, compared to this, it's significant. Yes. I oh, I have it. I have another question. question. Yes, on on number six uh, on the development of the new website. Yes. Um, is there going to be any input from uh, different advisories, et cetera, on the look and design of the website? I think someone who could answer that better than me is sitting two people I, away from me. That's <laughs> why I'm Bad, just you please be so kind. <laughs> we are planning on having several, uh, I don't want to call them committee, they're going to be focus groups to get feedback and input from several different constituents like students, uh, faculty, staff. Hey, Bass, could you speak up a little bit, please? Advancement. Administrators and also the Advancement Council. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple from the Advancement Council that are very oh, interested okay. in They're going to be having some focus groups, Ray, to okay. get solicit that kind of feedback Thank you. Before, before they go into development. Thank you. Good. They are not committees. Just yeah, focus just groups. Focus. Right. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're ready to call the question. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Maddox seconded the motion. Okay. Um, we're ready for item number 11, uh, miscellaneous. Before we move to that, though, I would just like to mention that you've probably noticed <laughs> that uh, this is the first meeting that we've conducted with the, you know, with the new iPads, and we don't have all of these notebooks up here. So that's hence the comments about scrolling and, <laughs> you know, searching and, and trying to find it. We're all still uh, becoming familiar with it and everything, but... Um, I must say the experience has been great up to this point for this meeting. I would agree with that, Don. I want to thank Peggy and Baz for all the work they did. I think this is a wonderful program. It's yes. really good. Yeah. I agree. I, I'm, I'm loving this. Yeah. I really, I'm surprised. <laughs> and, and Marianne, that basketball schedule you can get on that iPad right there. So we'll show you that. All right. So, yeah. So she got, we got a little tutoring going on. Over there too. And I'd like to double thank Peggy because Peggy made it. Yes. Peggy really learned how to. Put that together. Did a great job with it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it really, it it's really been phenomenal. Coach Oswald, we've been enjoying the training, the, training the training and the, the, you know, the whole thing. And uh, a, a couple of us had iPads and the rest didn't. And so it's pretty new for most everybody. And uh, we're trying to model the way of innovation and <laughs> technology <laughs> development, you know, in the college. So uh, the, the, the board's on board with that. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, item 11, need a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss non-elected personnel matters to protect the privacy interest of the individuals to be discussed for a period of? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So move. So move. Oh. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. Whoever. <laughs> Dr. Daniels motioned and uh, Trustee Maddox second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we will temporarily adjourn and we'll be back. All right, we're back in uh, open session here. Trustee Flunder will rejoin us momentarily. <laughs> Item number 12 on the agenda, personnel. I'm going to cover for Dean Marks this evening. Okay. Um, under personnel item 12A, um, for your information, I ask your approval. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for uh, approve the section A on information. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. And I would ask for your uh, approval of the recommendations under um, 12B um, to include um, the item that was added the, in the amendment to the agenda. So move. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Shit. Any question or comment? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank motion you. Motion carries. All right. 
agenda item 13 report of committees Would anyone like to lead off no, and there's also a human resources division report that she makes on page 119 and I'd rec I'll make a motion to accept that report that came from Leona and Steen human oh, resources okay. report okay we have a recommendation to accept the human resources report it's on page 119 if you care to look at it have a motion second have a motion in a second questions or comments all in favor aye. Aye. aye any opposed thanks Ray now we'll move to item 13 report of committees any anyone care to lead off I just have a, a very brief one uh, we did uh, change the date and presentation for the advancement council it will be December 2nd and we will be conducting and presenting our uh, strategic plan presentation that we did uh, at, at the national conference oh, excellent okay good very good all right any other committee reports I, I don't know I mean that the uh, gala committee met again and um, is moving right along established a timeline for the gala down. that will be <laughs> October 25th mm -hmm. of 2014 2014 mm -hmm. and uh, one of the key things that we need to do immediately and I will just throw that out there is come up with a theme which we hope will be the annual theme so some catchy phrase something that you know definitely indicates education in raising money for for our college and for scholarships so if anybody has any real neat ideas uh, we're in the process of taking those in so all you creative <coughs> folks let us know Seven. Seven. Very good. <laughs> right. The KACCT quarterly meeting is uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks, December 8th and 9th in Coffeeville. Uh, Dr. Gibbons, uh, Trustee Flunder, and I will be sojourning down there for that. And I'm sure I'm the designated driver. Yes. <laughs> 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 you don't work his feet. Thank, thanks, Kim Bryan, for that nice viewing, too, by the way. That's, that's the only way, way to go. We don't have to finish business. We are on uh, report of committees. So I think we have concluded that, however. So I'm not hearing anybody else speak up. All right, let's move to item 14 unfinished business. Have we scheduled the next uh, meeting on the handbook? Uh, no, Peggy's been real busy with me out of town, but she'll jump on that tomorrow. I'm, I'm in no hand, hurry. I just to, didn't, I don't yeah. know if I missed it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's been, it, you're right. We, sh we need to reschedule it. Yeah. We'll, we'll start working on that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't think we, the handbook may have to be extended on kind of the holiday season coming up, and nobody, nobody's. Uh, I don't know the time, time schedule is going to be all messed up. Well, <clears throat> we'll see what Peggy can, can possibly get coordinated, but uh, maybe we'll try to wrap it up in one more meeting somehow if we can expedite how we move how we move through that. So I think there's some strategies being talked about for that. And like so, <clears throat> yeah. one more question on the handbook. We might be able to go to the casino and do that, get that done at the casino. I don't think so, Trustee Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> um, could could you make an electronic version of the handbook available to us? Ooh. Yeah, we can. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We will do that. Today. The handbook or the hey. policy book? The policy. We already so, have yes. the changes that we talked about at that meeting. We have the policy book that we have the other day. 125. Matter of fact, I separated them out for the rest of the book so I can go through it. Well, there was 120 on this for today. We have uh, one meeting going here, please. I'll, I'll talk out loud. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, for the handbook, when we met before and the deans were included in our meeting, the changes that we made, I've gotten all those back. 
and separated the parts we discussed out. And so um, now we need to take them back to the college committees for the college committees to see them, and then we'll be ready to bring them to the board. Because the board has already given us their That might input. be a good place for it, yeah. Yeah. Right. So it may, I don't know if we have any more college meetings between now and uh, January, but if we do, we'll, we'll work on getting it out again. Yeah, that's race committee. Mr. Race. Chairman, I move we adjourn. No. <laughs> second. I have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. We are adjourned. Okay.